put Nathaniel back. I, I hope the video problems don't persist, but if they do, then you're just going to have to go on without me. Um, but we're going to be talking about Patsy uh, once again, and we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, which are uh, or is categorical encoding. This is the way of taking categories or qualitative features and making them quantitative, which I think is uh, like pretty much like into the heart and the soul of statistics and data science, or at least data science. Um, one of the things that you'll see is that there's, at least when I was taught, there was one basic way to do it. And this is the normal way. This is what Patsy does initially. Um, it's going to go ahead and say like, hey, uh, you didn't specify a way to transform these things. I'm going to transform them in this sort of normal, basic way. But there's lots of ways to do it. When I learned about lots of ways to do it, my eyes kind of like opened up. I was like, whoa. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. I think you'll find this super interesting. Okay, we, we go ahead, we make some demo data. Uh, we import Patsy. We make a D matrix out of it. We go ahead and we uh, take our D matrix and we turn it into, or I'm sorry, we take our A and we turn it into numeric values. So our A was previously A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3, and we go ahead and we make it into numeric values up here. Um, you can get more specificity with this. You can force it into a categorical by doing C of A and specify the number of levels. So A3, A2, A1. I can specify them right here. And notice if I specify the levels in a different order, it will go ahead and will choose which one to include and which one not to include. Um, let's see here. If I include a level that isn't there, uh, then it's going to bug out. So I included blue. Blue doesn't exist here. Ugh, video is still off. OK, it's gone. We're going to have to do this alone. Uh, if I include blue here, then it's going to go away. Um, so it's, it's going to throw, a, throw an error. It, the blue doesn't exist. And there's a ton of ways to encode this stuff. So you can go ahead and do a polynomial encoding, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Or you could specify your own encoding via a contrast matrix. So this will basically say if I've got, you know, in this case, two levels, <clears throat> I can specify exactly uh, what will happen in each particular circumstance when it's A1, A2, or A3. Um, so when it is A1, that's true. We'll go ahead and specify a specific thing. Um, the final thing that I want to show you here before we get into the fun stuff is that in this contrast matrix, it gives us this really weird stuff up here. Uh, we can go ahead and we can specify uh, some names for the contrast matrix uh, by making a contrast matrix. Um, so if you do that, you can go ahead and you can specify the two columns that you want out of it. Okay. Well, that's about it. That's, that's kind of like all the stuff there is to uh, categorical variables except for what you actually do with them. So let's download some data. This is test scores, and this is mostly test scores by race. I forget which race is which, so I mean we're just going to have to just forget about it. Um, so for example, if we go ahead and import treatment coding, this is the normal way that we encode stuff. Uh, this is often called dummy uh, coding, dummy variable encoding. We can look at the way it's actually translated. We take one of these variables, and we set it to be the reference variable. So this could be like, I don't know, A1 or, or A2, something like that. Um, so remember, we've got four. We translate four columns into three. So previously, we had one, two, three, four. And we translate it into three. And then we go ahead and we say, hey, the first one, you're never, if, if, this, is, if this is true, if this first one is true, which could be, I don't know, it's, uh, the, the races in this case were black, white, Hispanic, and Asian. So if this first one is white, then this one will go ahead and say, hey, if this is true, everything gets a zero. But if Hispanic is true, the first one gets a one. If Asian is true, the second one gets a one. And if black is true, the third one gets a one. Okay. And we can show how we translate these things into actual values by showing the contrast matrix of this data. So we go ahead and we, we, we transform this. Okay. So the next thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead, oh, excuse me, I'm Guess I'm waking up in nine hours. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and use this specifically. So we're going to do some ordinary least squares. So that's right. We're going to be training a linear regression model on this. We're going to be fitting the model using the specific categorical encoding called treatment or dummy that we just discussed. And there's a specific interpretation for everything that we'll see here. So there's an interpretation for all the coefficients and there's an interpretation for the p-values. Okay. So here's the interpretation for the coefficients. Remember, we included a reference 
uh, in this case in a reference race, uh, but this could be a reference category. And you can specify it by including a number here. So we'll say the second one is the reference category. It automatically says the, the, the zeroth one, the first one is the uh, reference category. So that reference category is gonna have a mean, and that mean is gonna be 46. That's the mean of the reference category. Each of these other coefficients, and that's gonna be the intercept, that's the mean of the, so the intercept coefficient is the mean of the reference category. The uh, coefficient that is for the uh, each of the other dummy variables um, is going to be the difference from this and the reference category. So in this case, the reference category scored 46. This uh, race scored 11 points above, this one uh, one point above, and this point one seven uh, points above. And the p-value for each of these, the p-value for the first one is basically saying like, hey, um, is, is, is this category, uh, is, is the mean of this category significantly above zero? And that's almost always gonna be the case. But the p-value here is that, is this uh, race, is this uh, whatever, s significantly different uh, from the, the reference one? So if this reference one were like white, you know, is this significantly different? No. Uh, or yes, in this case, a p-value of less than 0.05. Is this one significantly different? No, it's, it's the exact same, it's very close. Uh, we don't have enough evidence. Uh, and then finally, is this one statistically different? Yes, okay? So as I said before, you can also uh, tell us which one is the reference uh, category by specifying a two. And so we get this sort of different one. So this, this category, this whatever this is, they scored really well. Um, and you'll notice the p-values change. So we say uh, different, uh, different, not different. So it, it's kind of interesting. If you phrase the problem differently, you know, you get different significances, right? Like if you phrase it differently, different things are significant. Okay. So there's another uh, encoding called sum coding that Pasty uh, goes ahead and gives us. You can go ahead and see how it's done here. This is the contrast matrix. It, it looks very, very different. Um, one thing that you'll note is you'll see that uh, our uh, coefficient for the intercept is very different. The coefficient for the intercept happens to be the grand mean. So what does this mean? This means it's the mean of the means of all the categories. So in this case, if we take the mean per race and then we go ahead and we take the mean of that, and that's called the grand mean. Um, so that, that is the grand mean. This is different from like a weighted average of the entire thing or a mean over the entire uh, data set. This is the grand mean. Um, each of these is the difference from the grand mean. Right, each of these coefficients is the difference from the grand mean, and the p-value here is is uh, is going to say is this significantly different from the grand mean? So the question up above might be like, hey, we've got a couple of treatments, uh, and we're going to be trying all these treatments treatments against the baseline, and the baseline is no treatment. You know, what's what's the and we'll look at p-values in this case. You know, this is a perfectly good way to ask that question. Now. Another good way to ask this question is, do we have an outlier? So we have like a population of rabbits, you know, right? And we've got rabbits that are, uh, I don't know, have pointy ears and rabbits that have droopy ears and blah, blah, blah. And we want to see if one species of rabbit um, eats more carrots than others, right? Um, so we're looking at the deviance from the population. Um, the only thing that's a kind of a little problem here is that uh, we're missing one of these deviances. Uh, in order to not be something that's collinear, um, you need to take one of these uh, categories and you kind of exclude it from the from the data. So we can't actually test that p-value here. Okay. So the next, uh, this one's still kind of interesting as well. So this is called difference coding. Um, again, you have this like interesting way of coding this stuff. It's like Eh, it's somewhat comprehensible. You can look at the formulas. I don't remember these formulas. Um, but the idea here is, is a little bit different. Uh, the idea is that this, uh, this is going to be the mean for, I believe, oh, excuse me, I think this is the grand mean. Yeah, so this is the grand mean once again. And what we have here as the category or the coefficient of the first category, this is gonna be the difference um, of this guy from the previous member. And you'll notice this 11.46 or whatever, 5.6, it looks super similar. You notice it's, it's right up here. Because remember our reference category happened to be first. Um, and if we go ahead and we subtract our reference category from the, from the second one, it's, it's gonna end up to be that as well. So difference coding basically says, 
hey, is this one, is, and it works for ordinal stuff, so is, is this guy significantly different from the first one? And is this guy significantly different from the second one? And is this guy significantly different from the third one? Right? Um, and so you'll notice we'll, we'll calculate their difference. The uh, difference is uh, 11.54, right? This is where we get this 11.54 from. Um, and we notice we get this very different p-value stuff. If we ask it in this way, everything is significantly different. Now, it doesn't make sense to ask this question on race because there's no ordering to that at all. Um, it would make sense to ask this question on dosage. So let's say some doctor is giving dosage. Uh, so one shot of penicillin, two shots of penicillin. Is three shots of penicillin significantly different from two shots? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, second to last type of encoding that we're going to be going over is called Helmert coding. Um, so simple as well. And we get this sort of like different uh, interpretation here. Uh, of all of this stuff. The, um, the intercept is again the grand mean. Um, the, uh, each of these C's, however, is slightly different. Uh, let me talk about the p-values first. First thing is the p-values. The p-values are the probability that um, this is different from all the things that came before it, right? And so this, this one should be the exact same thing, right? Um, like it's still, it's still gonna have the exact same p-value. However, this one right here, this is gonna be the probability that this race is different from the previous two. And the probability that this race is different from the previous three, right? It's, it's a sort of a very different idea. Um, I've heard that this is used very often in, in neuroscience when you're doing treatments over time. I've not used this type of encoding before. Um, and to interpret it, it's a little bit hard. Um, you might say, okay, if I believe that this is the looking at the fourth category and looking at its difference from all the previous three categories. Let's check out that difference. That difference is 3.16. Well, that's not the coefficient. The only problem with this is that we just need to scale this up. Uh, if you go ahead and you scale this by four, so if you uh, multiply uh, this coefficient up here by four, you get 3.16. So that's it. And if you multiply this one by, uh, I think, three, uh, you'll go ahead and you'll get whatever, whatever that's supposed to be. Okay, and if you multiply this one by uh, two, uh, guess what you'll get? You'll get the 11 number that we've seen so often, this 11 number. Um, so, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be super useful, but something that I really like is polynomial encoding. Um, okay, so polynomial encoding is this. So I, I go ahead, uh, I, I make some new ordinal stuff. This is a read category, uh, which is zero, one, two, or three. Uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, from Patsy contrast, I'll go ahead and import polynomial encoding. The polynomial encoding is super weird. Uh, it's very odd, uh, this sort of stuff right here, uh, like the, the way that you actually do this, but the interpretation is pretty simple. You're going to have a linear, a quadratic, and a cubic part. Uh, each of them are going to have a coefficient and a p-value. Uh, the coefficient is how important is the linear part. The p-value is the significance of this. So what I basically said is like, hey, being in a reading category has some sort of effect on your test scores. So being able to read so well has a certain effect on your writing ability, right? Is this effect linear? Is it quadratic or cubic? And you'll notice here it's linear. It's not quadratic, it's not cubic. Um, this will assume that there is an equal spacing between these categories. So if I had four categories and I assumed that their spacing was one, two, 10, and 11, um, so getting from the first category to the second is hard. Getting from the second category to the third is twice as hard. Getting from the uh, third category to the fourth is crazy hard. Um, then we'd of course get different p-values. So we get different p-values, we get different um, uh, coefficients, I also believe. Coefficients are somewhat the same, at least until here. Um, so anyways. And so that's kind of a really cool one. Um, you can make your own. Uh, I made my own right here. It's called Simple. This is something else that I've learned in class. Uh, what Simple does is it basically looks exactly the same as treatment. The only difference between this and treatment is instead of the mean of the reference category, it's going to be showing the mean of the, uh, the grand mean. Um, okay. So this is it. This is kind of all the categorical encodings that are given to uh, in Patsy. If you didn't know about some of these, that's totally fine, but now you do. Uh, these categorical encodings can be incredibly useful. They're gonna drive exactly the research question that you seek to answer. So if you seek to answer a specific research question, you should use one of these categorical encodings and Patsy can do it for you. Again, Patsy should be your go-to library for statistical transformations. 
Okay. Thank you. I, I really hope this video problem will stop, um, and I'll see you next time. We're going to be doing stateful transformations and splines.